get you ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars or more at a two point six nine percent APR. Call Intel Alone at eight hundred nine one eight ninety two hundred. Intel Alone. Borrow smart. NMLS three two nine zero. Successful realtor and cold blooded serial killer. It appears to be an execution style. Daily Mail TV today at four on KTLA five. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. Governor Newsom expected to make a big announcement regarding masks, how it could affect local schools. We'll have the very latest. I'm Eric Spielman. Talks between Russia and Ukraine have ended, but while the two sides were meeting, Ukraine says Russia bombed an apartment complex, causing many civilian casualties. We'll have the latest on that. Good morning, I'm Erin Myers here in Port Orange, where we're seeing strong winds in Los Angeles and Ventura counties, along with the Inland Empire. I'll have all the information on what you need to know coming up. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. It's a big day for President Biden's SCOTUS pick. We're going to explain the big meeting she has today and what she hopes to accomplish on Capitol Hill this week. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin. Speaking of big Screen Actors Guild Awards last night, we'll tell you who won what happened backstage. And the Grey's Anatomy star, Sarah Drew, with a brand new movie. Sarah, on the way here live. Our good Monday morning uh, and a beautiful day in store for Southern California. A little breezy in the usual areas, but the temperature is going to be right back up there in the 80s. 78 coastal, downtown 82, 85 in the San Fernando Valley, 74 high desert inland, Empire 83, Orange County inland, 86 degrees. Frank and Jessica, back to you. The United Nations General Assembly is considering an emergency resolution this morning condemning Russia's attack on Ukraine. Both countries held peace talks this morning and did not reach an agreement on ending the war. KTLA's Eric Spillman in the newsroom now with more. Eric, good morning. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Frank. At the UN General Assembly in New York, delegates from around the world are demanding an end to Russia's invasion. Here's the Secretary General of the UN earlier this morning. This escalating violence, which is resulting in civilian deaths, including children, is totally unacceptable. Enough is enough. The fighting in Ukraine must stop. He was speaking at an emergency session of the UN General Assembly to discuss the crisis in Ukraine, the first of its kind, first session of its kind in 40 years. Earlier today, Russian and Ukrainian officials held five hours of talks in Belarus. No agreements were reached. The two sides said they would meet again. Ukraine is calling for an immediate ceasefire and the withdrawal of Russian troops, but Ukraine's president says he is skeptical that there will be a deal to end the fighting in his country. Overnight, Russian forces carried out more missile strikes against Ukraine. They bombarded apartment buildings in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Ukraine says there are dozens of civilian casualties. In another part of the country, Russian missiles struck a kindergarten and a market. Fierce fighting was reported as the Ukrainians were able to keep control of the country's two largest population centers. They're slowing down the Russian advance. Ukrainian fighters have been able to defend a key airfield outside of Kyiv, but Russian soldiers are now just 18 miles north of the capital. They've moved to towns west of Kyiv. Ukrainian leaders say Russia may be trying to surround the city and cut off supply lines of weapons coming from Western Europe. Over the weekend, Putin put his country's nuclear forces on alert. He called it a response to the illegitimate sanctions imposed on Russia by the European Union and the U.S. Putin may have figured out a way to increase the number of soldiers helping with the invasion. U.S. officials believe the president of Belarus, who is backed by Putin, may send his country's troops into Ukraine to assist the Russians with their attack. In Ukraine, the suffering continues. Women and children are fleeing the country. Men are not allowed to leave. They must stay to join the defense forces. Train stations are packed with people trying to get out. Border crossings are backed up with long lines of cars. Sometimes people just abandon their cars and walk. At the border between Ukraine and Poland, people carried suitcases as they walked into Poland. Half a million people have fled the country since the invasion started. Ukrainians are volunteering to join the fight to defend their country, even uh, prison inmates. Let's go on to the next video and we hopefully we can show you uh, what's happening with that. Uh, these are demonstrations now that are taking place in various European cities. This one's in Cologne, Germany, uh, drew a massive crowd. There was one in Berlin that drew something like 100,000 people. But look what's happening in Russia. These people in uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, 